morning. My name is Wen Jian. I'm from China. I have been a public interest lawyer for 10 years. It's a great honor to be right here to share what I myself and my organization um, have been pilot to provide effective legal aid in China. Um, first, I want to share with you about the challenges China is facing in enabling access to justice for all. And then I will share with you what the efforts different stakeholders have made, and also uh, especially uh, share with you an experiment uh, through collaborative mod collaborative strategy to address the effective legal aid for migrant workers. You know, China is, has the biggest population in the world, and as a developing country, we also have the biggest disadvantaged people. Uh, you may have heard that we have 262 million migrant workers, which is bigger even than many countries' total population. And we also have a young lawyer system restored in 1979, and still by the end of 2013, we only have 250,000 lawyers. It's a small number compared to 1.4 billion people in this country. On the first day I heard that in India there are 1.5 million lawyers, six times of Chinese lawyers. And our third challenge is, in the, in the last 30 years, China had experienced rapid economic development and urbanization. And it creates many uncertainties for the rule of law building. You can imagine there will be more disputes arise. So we have big population, small number of lawyers, and a lot of new disputes. So this is the challenge we are facing. Uh, then I will share with you the different stakeholders' efforts. First, China has established a nationwide institutionalized legal aid system led by the government. It started in 1994. Now we have a, a, a comparatively mature system. We have the legal, frame, legal aid framework, like the eligibility criteria, uh, the case types, the funding, the establishment of government-funded legal aid offices. But here I really want to focus on the, the budget, you know, this is, uh, in 2012, we have, the government had invested two billion US dollars in the legal aid, even though it's a small number of, uh, compared to the country, but you can find the chain is promising. Uh, speaker said there's, if there's no enough funding, you know enough legal aid, we don't see if we have enough, but there's a promise. And then I want to share with you lawyers' efforts, lawyers' association. In the last five to 10 years, all China Lawyers Association have tried it's best to create a public law culture. You can see we have many committees uh, related to public law, like human rights, constitutional law, or environment of children. And also the, the ACLA has uh, issued annual lawyer uh, social responsibility report, which creates guidelines, but also peer pressure for law firms to do public interest work. Now I want to have my folks on the collaborative problem solving oriented experiment of migrant workers. What's the problem we are going to solve? You know, in the early 2000s, we have the urbanizing process. We have more than 200 million migrant workers. Their labor rights are wide, uh, widely violated. <coughs> and for example, they cannot get the payment after hard work, some of them. And they are reluctant to use the legal judicial system. And they usually use the extreme ways like the right to commit suicide or um, leverage uh, method. The central government really wants to solve the problem, like the primary win, win job of personal collective wages for migrant workers. But what's the institutional method to solve this problem? So we have a baseline research on the problem and the possible solutions of what we can do as a civil society organization. So we finally decided to have an experimental civil society-based legal aid model. We invite different key stakeholders, so this is the collaborative, like local government, Bureau of Justice, media, international organization, bar association, law firms. Uh, we have two purposes. The first is we want them to contribute to the experimental process. Second, we want to have the skill up potential in terms of funding and, and policy. And we also have, the, we, because we want to show the, the models uh, value, so we have a data-driven 
uh, were restricted data to analysis. And in 2007, 2007, the UHP China office saw this model sweated and tried to reach funding from the Belgian government to help us to help the national scale up. So we have now, uh, now I want to share with the achievements. Now we have more than 30 organizations on South of Beijing. And we have cultivated the first generation of professional migrant workers' lawyers. They are experts in their field, they respect by judges and legislators. And also we serve more than 260,000 migrant workers. We have collected money in their pocket, to their pocket, 4.5 million US dollars. It seems many uh, tens of thousands of families out of poverty. And also we promote policy with most of many of our proposals have been accepted. This, this is the happy hour for us to send money to our clients. What's the impact? So ACLA, um, our China Lawyers Association, after just one year in experiment, our China Lawyers Association issued a policy to promote this model among the legal profession. And also the central government issued a policy to waive the income prof proof requirement for migrant workers for legal aid. It's a breakthrough improvement. It have millions of lawyer, uh, migrant workers to get the legal aid. And also we create a political space for civil society based organizations. And there's more and more organizations which can practice legal aid. And also the government is thinking about to have a, a policy. Uh, and also we have the kind of buy-in, as others mentioned, the government has a contracting model with us. And the more important is the rights protection improved. Before, in 2005, the 80% of the cases are unpaid salary cases, the prison violation cases, but now we only have 20%. So, and also this organization has been granted with the consulted, a special consulted status with the ECOSOC. Uh, it provides us the opportunity to connect, connect the global with the local. We also will promote the guidelines uh, from this conference back to China. And lessons I want to share with you. The first is, I think, in countries with the not developed rule of law system, even civil, I think civil society should be independent, but it doesn't mean we should be confrontational. I think with the limited resources, we need to develop a problem solving and collaborative strategy. Second is, I think, local ownership and the local lab experiment is very important. I know in the many programs, if the international funding stopped, the program stopped. But for us, because it's from the local ownership, for example, the UNDP program just one year support, but we survived to this funding. Okay, I don't have enough, but I can see it from PPT. Thank you very much.